Hey there, friends and mortal enemies, if I've accumulated any mortal enemies throughout my life that are like, I'm gonna hate watch this guy. Um, welcome back to another Blender tutorial where in this one, uh, we are gonna be making kind of the Windows XP kind of pipe screensaver. Remember how Windows XP had like a bunch of just disgusting, you wouldn't even wanna see it. Not really a screensaver, more like a screen harmer, really. Um, we're gonna be recreating the pipe one, which is actually something that wasn't possible until recently. Uh, with geometry nodes uh, because there was a new node added called the accumulate node in 3.1 we're going to be talking about it and how it's useful for something like this and the whole point of that intro is uh, saying Accumu accumulate mortal enemies which was supposed to be a segue into the accumulate node but that didn't work out anyways uh, before i get into the tutorial we actually have a sponsor for this one micro center uh, somehow they deemed these this uh, blunder tutorial channel worthy so uh, first a quick message on behalf of micro Micro Center and then the tutorial. Listen, we all already know, and if you don't know, you're about to know that Micro Center has a bunch of computers, electronics, networking, communication devices, over 30,000 items in stock. Whether you're looking for a desktop, a laptop, just a part of a computer, TVs, monitors, a bunch of other stuff, you name it, they have it. And whether you're shopping at an actual Micro Center store, like an actual location, I've won a couple miles from where I live, coincidentally, or uh, online is the point. Uh, either way, you are going to get the best deals possible. And the associates working at Micro Center are knowledgeable, they're friendly, you have any questions, you don't know how to build your computer, which part should I get? They will answer your questions. Make sure to check out Micro Center's new lineup of business solutions, including workstation computers from Dell and Supermicro. We're talking legit computers that can handle rendering, they can handle complicated tasks uh, that require, you know, good, good components. As well as the new Supermicro workstation slash server builder, and this is available at select Micro Center locations. I remember kind of recently, I was at a Micro Center store near me. Again, I think I was looking for a hard drive. And of course they had the hard drive I needed at the right RPM and all this. But speaking of hard drives, they're actually better than hard drives. SSDs, we're talking solid state drives. Micro Center wants to offer new customers a 240 gigabyte, you heard that right, SSD. You can find out more by clicking the link in the description, but this is for new customers. You go to one of the physical like in-store locations. There's no purchase necessary. And of course there is one coupon per customer because if they gave you 10 SSDs, that'd be a bit unfair. Uh, thank you, Micro Center, for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the tutorial. Okay, we are back. For you, it's been a bit of time. For me, it hasn't. I just kind of sat here for three seconds. I'm like, whatever. Okay, so uh, what are we making? Again, we're making this um, kind of screensaver thing. It's completely procedural, uh, which is kind of fun. It's all math-based, and at any point, I can literally just click a number, like this uh, seed value, and get an entirely different animation. Now, the only problem with this, of course, is the camera might not be in the correct place to kind of see this the best, but you can just kind of keep cycling through these until you get a good one. Either way, uh, we're going to be making the screensaver, and it's all nodes, there aren't even too many. So let's get into it. Only thing you need for this tutorial is a brain. Not even, just copy what I do. Uh, but also 3.1 alpha, usually I say feel free to use 3.0, not in this case. We need the accumulate node, which is only in 3.1 alpha as I'm recording. So how do we do this? Let's go to geometry nodes, apply a geo nodes thing, which again, the cube now has this modifier, which is described by these nodes. And I'm gonna get rid of this group input because deleting the default cube gives me a sadistic pleasure. Boom. So we wanna make this pipe animation. How do we do it? Well, if you think about it, what we need to do is we first need to generate this kind of random branching structure. So imagine it's all already there. And then we need to do this kind of generating process where we already have it, but now we're saying instead of showing it all at once, kind of show it as we progress along it. So first we make it, then we do this transition. Well, to make it, that's kind of the more complicated part. Uh, we kind of need to make this randoming, randomized uh, branching pattern. And here's how we're going to do it. I want you to imagine that we start at the origin. So we're just here, we live here. And then after every iteration, we make a move. So on the first iteration, let's say we move up on the Y axis, that's one move. On the next one, we can move to the right on the X axis, fine. Then the next move, maybe we move down, maybe on the next move, we move down again, then to the left, then up, then to the left, then up, then right. This is the branching algorithm we're gonna use. We're basically gonna say for every move, pick a direction, up, down, left, right, or in the case of the uh, 3D world, we're also gonna have the Z axis. So we're gonna have up, down, left, right, and then on the Z axis, up and down. 
pick one of these six directions and make that the next point to go to, okay? That's the algorithm. Well, to do that, we need to kind of have a way to randomly pick uh, these points or these directions rather. So what I'm gonna do, hopefully this made sense. Uh, so the idea is there. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a mesh line which the only reason we're using this is it's a great way to quickly generate a bunch of points. So this is a line composed of 10 points. I don't know if it's, I guess it's not gonna show it in wireframe, but you can see it in the uh, spreadsheet. We have 10 points here and we can procedurally change how many there are. So let's say we start with 50 points. I wanna say take each of these points and map them to some position that follows the algorithm I just said. So again, mesh line, anytime we wanna change a position, we use the set position node. So how are we going to remap it now? And by the way, uh, not only are we uh, mapping these vertices, but we also have the edges connecting them, which is what will generate this curve. Because I did see somebody did do random walks um, on YouTube already, but this is a bit different. Okay, so we want to set positions uh, to these uh, special locations that we need to mathematically uh, describe. So let's mathematically describe them. I'm gonna make a vector. This vector is gonna represent one of our possible moves. So let's say uh, we wanna go to the left on the x-axis, that's negative one on x. Another possible move is we go to the right, so positive one on x. And you can see each of these vectors, I gotta make six of them, is gonna describe one of the six options uh, for direction. So this next one is one up on the y-axis and then one down on the y-axis. So here we have our x moves, here we have our Y moves, and then for our Z moves, again, zero, zero, and then positive one, zero, zero, negative one. So you can just think of these as a list of six vectors that describe all our possible outcomes. And what we wanna do is for each of these points, we wanna randomly decide a direction. Well, if we wanna randomly decide between these, we can just use a random value node. So hopefully this is all making sense. It's, it's like a lot of nodes we don't normally use, like we usually don't pipe in raw vector nodes, but the idea is not too complicated. So for each of these, I'm gonna generate a random number between zero and one, each of these vertices. And really, it's not like we want a number between zero and one, we want one of six options, okay? So you could either kind of go one through six and cast that to an integer, or what's a bit simpler, maybe it's a bit messier, but it kind of makes more sense, is we're gonna take this number and we are going to snap it and I'll describe what that means to the nearest one divided by six. Okay, what the fuck? Well, what's going on? Snapping basically means round or go to the nearest. Nearest what? One divided by six. Why? Uh, because we have six options. So we can either go to one sixth, which will symbolize our first option, uh, two six, which is the second one, three six, and so forth. So each of these zero to one sixth gaps is going to be one of these options. Okay. Uh, to actually make the uh, selection happen now, all we need to do is we take these two vectors and we mix them together. And for the factor, which is saying which one are we going to pick, one or the other, uh, we're going to do a bit of math here. So we're going to mix these and then we're just going to keep chaining them. So just make a chain of mixing. And there might be a kind of, I'm sure there is a kind of neater way to do this because, you, you know, you just have positive negative one on X, Y, Z. We're going to do it like this because it's kind of the most intuitive way and it visually makes a lot of sense, but I'm sure there's some absolute value nonsense you can do, okay? Uh, so here we have kind of our options. Uh, maybe I wanna select one and not the others. Uh, now we just gotta make a filter for these. So again, we have numbers between zero and one, which are cast to the nearest sixth by the snapping. And now uh, we could either do this with a compare or I believe there is a, um, I think that there is a custom compare node in a geometry nodes, which is the same thing, but whatever. So we can take this and compare it to the nearest. We wanna say, is it equal to the nearest sixth? Uh, this epsilon basically means, is it equal to a sum threshold? Because it doesn't necessarily have to be the same because if the fifth decimal is a bit off, we, we still want it to be equal. This is just a bit of a buffer. But um, if this uh, randomly generated number, so think of this as one number, is equal to a sixth, pick the first one. If instead it's equal to two sixths, so that's the second option, make it the second one and so on. So when you see this uh, big chain of nodes that kind of looks like all the same, but kind of complicated, it's, it's a very simple idea. We're basically making a random number selector and that random number selector is gonna go to one of six directions. Nothing complicated, but you can impress your parents, I'm sure. So there, so what did we do? We did one divided by six, two divided by six, three divided, four divided by six, and then five divided by six. 
And did that capture all of them? I believe that should be fine. Um, one interesting thing about snapping is I don't know if it's going to cast to zero. So hopefully this works. I guess we'll find out uh, in a second. So uh, the way I want you to think about this is this output is now choosing one of six uh, directions randomly uh, for each of these vectors. And by the way, let's uh, save this. I'm going to call it available on Patreon because if you click that link in the description, you can literally just download the finished uh, project. But keep watching. Like, why not? Um, you, you get to learn it for free. So if we were to take this and now just cast it to the positions, it's not going to do what we want, but let's see what we get. Uh, we get this kind of weird grid thing. And what it's really doing is it's taking our line and for each of these vertices, it's mapping it to one of, actually, kind of a clever way to make a diamond. It's going to go to one of six locations described by these vectors. Um, and a lot that you can imagine, there's a lot of vertices on the same one, but you can't really tell. Either way, uh, the point is this is not what we want because it is choosing a random direction each time, but it's not kind of saving the progress, right? Because what I want to do is I want to say pick a direction and then starting here now, go again. And then starting here, go again. Don't just pick a new direction from the origin. Save your progress. This was not possible before. There was no way to save progress in geometry nodes. Now there's a new node called the accumu accumulate field node. Here's what it does. Long story short, it saves your progress. That's what this node does. Uh, on a more technical uh, kind of view of it, what it does is it takes a field input and then it outputs not the same field, but it's accumulation. So each time we add uh, the next step, uh, which in this case means we're adding decisions each time we're adding one of these vectors. So instead of picking one each time, we are doing that, but we're also adding everything that happened before them. Okay, so that kind of low level view of it. So this is our custom field. Uh, it's custom because we did the math. Um, technically, this is a vector. I mean, I know it's a color, but it's a three-dimensional thing because it goes X, Y, Z. I want to accumulate this field that we made. And for the output, uh, you're going to see three options here. The one we're going to be using is a leading, which does exactly what I described. It saves our progress and adds on the newest step. Uh, the only difference between this and trailing is trailing starts at zero instead of at the first entry and then total gives you the total. Don't worry about that right now. What we care about is leading. So let's see if that works because I might have made a mistake. Okay. So you can see now we're getting something that looks a bit more random. And you're going to see the more um, we increase this count, the more vertices we're, the more decisions we're making, really. Uh, so you can think of this as the length of the animation. And you can see, indeed, it looks pretty random. But it does kind of look like it's tending to the right, and maybe that's just kind of random chance. Let's uh, change the seed. Yep, so you can see some of them are going to the left, some of them are trending upwards, downwards. And the thing with a random walk is uh, over a long period of time, it's going to look like, like a lot of nonsense, but it will stay kind of clustered towards the middle, if you think about it, that makes sense. Not guaranteed, but just with a high probability. Um, but it has this kind of nice clustering look to it. And again, the only two things we care about the, at this point is the count value, which is the length of this, which we procedurally control. Boom. And the second thing we care about is this uh, seed number, which is just going to give us different uh, animations. Okay. So we've kind of already done the first part. The first part was generating the structure. And now we just want to kind of show it emerge instead of having it all, you know, seen at once. So that's kind of the second thing we're going to do. So I'm just going to pick a seed value. Um, it's kind of important to pick one and kind of stick with it for now uh, because we need to know where to put our camera. So we need to know which way it's facing. So for now, I'm going to assume this one. I'm just going to move my camera to kind of view this nicely. And I'm going to make this a low field of view because that's what's going to make it look like the Windows XP. So that I want it to be able to see a bit further. So I'm going to increase its like furthest uh, focal dis view distance, whatever it's called. And something like that. I mean, you, you can pick a seed that looks nicer and pick a camera position that looks nicer, uh, but you get the idea. Okay, so now how do we actually visualize this, make it emerge, make it pretty, add colors, stuff like this. So uh, first of all, what do we have so far? We have our random selector, which is casting new positions with this accumulate field thing. So basically everything we've done is basically a modified mesh line at this point. Uh, we need to turn this into a visible curve. So let's do that. I'm going to take it, turn it into a curve, mesh to curve. Because again, everything we had was a mesh. 
Uh, the nice thing about a curve is we have, um, I don't think we're actually going to use this, but it has some nice features like the trim curve command lets you literally just animate the visibility. So that's one way to do it. We're going to do some indexing stuff for a reason I'll talk about later, but uh, we now have a curve, which lets us uh, do a bunch of stuff. One of those things we want to do for sure is we want to give this thing thickness, and we can do that by casting it back to a mesh. So yes, we're doing mesh to curve and curve to mesh, but the reason we're doing this back and forth kind of canceling process is during that thing, we get to recover a bit of thickness. So if we go to the profile curve, you can add this in right here. So you can think of this as kind of the, the curve that sweeps along it and gives it thickness. We make it a bit thinner to look better. Okay, so you can see now this thing is actually something that can be rendered. It has a surface, but it kind of looks very broken and jagged. And uh, the reason for that is the curves are always, this is like the worst case scenario. There are corners everywhere and they're 90 degree corners. So it's like, how is I going to shade it? Here's what we're going to do. First of all, uh, we're going to set shade smooth if it isn't already. So it's a smooth curve, should have already been, but you can make it flat or smooth. We somehow need to make these corners less intense, but they still need to be there. A couple ways we can do this. I think maybe the fastest way is we take this uh, mesh to curve, curve to mesh. Uh, we want to subdivide our curve, which isn't going to change the shape. It's just going to add more geometry. And I believe, let's see. Yeah, what this does is it kind of tines up these corners. So you can see uh, without this node and then with it, it's already helping. Uh, but it does take a bit of computation. I'm going to bring down our divisions. And uh, yeah, so uh, our subdivide curve is basically adding 12 points between every decision that's being made, I believe. Um, and that's just making these corners a bit softer. So maybe we could bring this down. And in addition to this, now we do a fillet curve. Let's try it. That's kind of like the beveling if we limit radius. Wow, that kind of looks like... It doesn't help. <laughs> in theory, though, what it should be doing is they're rounding the corners. Well, let's just not use that. And then let's play with this. Okay, so now we're getting something that looks kind of more presentable. I'm going to increase this. Shade smooth. That doesn't look too bad, especially from the camera view with this, like, kind of far away focal length look. I think that's pretty good. So, again, uh, the key to kind of breaking up, and you could, you know, bevel and subdivide your curve and all this, but the key is... I just add a bit of geometry and we can actually bring this further down and how many let's stick to like 1500 actually whatever okay so uh where are we uh we have this curve uh but it's not emerging right uh we didn't do the trim curve we didn't do anything else uh so we need this emerging property and i also want to make this look a bit cooler i want for every decision in other words every corner sorry i keep wiping my nose ah uh, i need to properly blow it or mid tutorial, you know, what are you going to do? I know I could cut it, but I'm lazy. Um, I also want to add a sphere at every corner, every decision, just so it looks a bit better. So let's do both of those things. Uh, first of all, let's add in those spheres because it's super fast. So we want to instance on points. And for each point, by the way, we're not doing the subdivided curve because now there's 12 times as many points, just the original. On each of these points, I want to instance a sphere. So if you can't picture what that looks like, boom, well, once we join these together and we see it, boom. So you can see uh, now we have a, sp a sphere spawned on each one of these, which we can bring the radius down for. And let's also bring the radius of our tubes down, which will also make it look better. So this will just make it look like these pipes have uh, joints now. Again, the reason I didn't use the uh, subdivided version is because of this. You see now there's like 12 times the amount. Okay. So uh, now all we need to do is the emerging property, which is super simple because everything, our um, thickness and then also our spheres is all dependent on this curve that we generated with mesh to curve. So uh, if we delete some of this curve, so we're gonna do each geometry, we're gonna do it by index. So this curve that we custom made has a bunch of points going along it with an index starting at zero, going all the way up to, I guess, 3000, whatever, right? If I take the index and say, where is the index greater than some number? You can see now we have this kind of generating thing because it's going to delete any part of the curve that doesn't satisfy this condition. So it's going to show 109 points now, and then it's going to go further and further and further. And ultimately, we want to go up to our threshold of, I guess, a custom number, but we can just type in 
3700. So this is one of our parameters we care about. So this is our upper bound. So I'm going to multiply it with a zero to one thing. And the idea in theory is now when we take this and multiply it by zero, none of this is going to fit the requirements. But as we go up to one, it's going to be uh, fully animated. In fact, uh, what we can do here is animate it kind of procedurally as well, because why not? I'm going to take the frame number. So this is also a 3.1 feature, I believe. So this gives us the frame number, one, two, three, four, five. I want to say, let's have this animation take 200 frames. So we're going to map from zero to 200 and then map it to a zero to one output. So this multiplier, how much are we trimming the curve? Or I guess the inverse of that is going to be controlled with this zero to 200 thing. Okay. And I think once we get over 200, so we're on frame 140, 150, it shouldn't, nothing should happen past that point. So let's see. And 200. And now it's not doing anything anymore. Cool. Uh, from the perspective of the camera, it's going to look more like the uh, screensaver, of course. Okay, so we have our generating thing. Again, you might want to consider moving and putting your camera somewhere that looks cool and generating an interesting one. Uh, but now we have this uh, emergent thing. Uh, really, the last thing to do is to kind of just give this thing a bit of color. And this is the part where I'm just going to show you the general idea. But to make it look good, or I guess bad, because it's the Windows XP thing, it's just a lot of fine tuning, but here's the idea. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give two materials. One material is going to be just for the sphere that gets instanced. We don't want the material, but we wanna set the material. It's just gonna be for the sphere that gets copied again on the corners. And another is gonna be for our uh, curve object. So that can just be here. So we're gonna set one material. I'm gonna call this pipe. And for the second one, I'm just going to make another material. I'm going to call this corner. Uh, we just assigned those. Because again, hopefully you've used a bit of GeoNodes before. Uh, we assign materials with GeoNodes, and then we customize our material. Uh, so with the pipe, you can see now we can change the color of the pipe. Uh, what we want to do is randomize it a bit. And there's a lot of ways to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say every, if this is a curve that goes from 0 to 1, like 0 to 100% progress, I want to say every fifth of it, Every 20% just change the color. Let's say that's what we want to do. Well, uh, what we can do is capture that information with something like a spline parameter. This might be called curve parameter in your version. But again, you should be using 3.1. So spline parameter. Uh, this factor gives us exactly that. It's a 0 to 1, 0 being the beginning of the curve, 1 being the end, um, giving us that information that we can send over. So when we do mesh to curve, let's capture that attribute, boys. I want that attribute sent back home to mom. So factor, capture it, and this should work. Even though we then did mesh to curve, or sorry, curve to mesh and all this, should work. So again, we're capturing an attribute. Which one? The one that tells us how far we are along the spline. Make sure to capture it. And now in the modifier, you can see we have this, uh, you know, attribute. I'm going to call it p -p -puzz, uh, which really is pipe position. To bring that information over, just take an attribute node. And again, make sure it's typed exactly the same. If these names don't match with capitals and all this, you're going to have an issue. So let's see what we have so far. Because this may not uh, work if I did it uh, incorrectly, which I can believe. Um, so you can see, it's a little hard to tell, uh, but if you ignore the spheres, you can see the beginning of this. Actually, let's uh, play it right here. You can see the beginning of this is black, and as we progress, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Because as we get towards the end of the curve, the end of the animation, it's going to be equal to one. So now, and now actually one thing I'm noticing is there's too much of this curve generated on frame zero. There should be none of it. So I'm going to take this frame and subtract one. So we start at frame zero instead of one. There we go. Um, you can see it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Uh, so to generate a random color for this, uh, or you could do kind of a spectrum. Uh, what you can do is with the hue saturation node, pick a color like red, use this as the hue factor, and you can see uh, we're getting something that slowly transitions colors, which I don't think that's how the original was. I think the original had more of this kind of snapping uh, thing, just like uh, we did before. So you could snap to the nearest 0.5, for example. So it's just going to change colors abruptly. Oh, wait, this is not set to snap. There we go. So you can see it just changes colors, or we can make it every fifth of the way. Uh, pick what you want, but I kind of like this continuum. I, I didn't mess with that before. So this is one way to kind of randomize the colors. You take it, you connect it to base color, 
You wait for Eevee to load, and boom, you got the thing. And then for the uh, corners, uh, you could just pick a different color. I mean, at this point, it, again, really what it is is it's just making it look good. So just let's just do a very quick setup. I'm going to do cycles. I'm going to get rid of our light, and I'm going to change this. I'm going to bury it and swap it out uh, for an HDRI just because it's a fast lighting setup. So something like this, we can actually see our pipes now. Beautiful. Film transparent to not see it. Um, it looks pretty good, right? Um, really, the key is um, matching the look again. So you want to make sure your pipe thickness looks the same. Um, our background should be black, although when we uh, render a frame here. So let's just render one frame, for example. Uh, it's already going to have a black background, or really an empty one, uh, which when we... Um, well, let's wait for it to finish. Uh, when we do a bit of compositing, the core idea, I guess right now it's still a transparent thing, uh, but we could do an alpha over. So now we're kind of going in the weeds. The tutorial's pretty much over. Feel free to pack up, boys. But you you just set a background color. You pick, uh, you know, this, that. Um, by the way, one, one thing you might want to consider, uh, just a quick kind of update you can do to this. If you don't like... Uh, kind of the gaps in between, like they're too small, like all these spheres are too closely packed together. Uh, feel free, maybe we could literally do this with a scaling node at the very end. That would be nice. Let's try it. Vector math scale. I'm going to scale it by two. There we go. It should be the same generation, but now the gaps are twice as large. Maybe? I think that makes sense. Either way, you can control the gap length and all that. So, at this point, I think you have everything you need to know. You just kind of pick a better camera angle, make some uh, materials that look a bit kind of crappier, I guess. Uh, but that's the essence of it. So let's go back to the main cam. 25 minutes, not bad at all. Either way, uh, we've made it to the end of the tutorial, and you know what part this is. I'm going to pimp Patreon. So uh, people, Patreon, why are there 700? It always changes, but why are there 700 to 750 some active patrons? Here's why. Uh, you got a bunch of benefits. So not only do you support this channel and the CG Matter channel directly, which you do, but you get benefits for being a patron. So for example, you can watch tutorials early. That's a big one. Sometimes I literally post tutorials a week early. Usually it's a day or two early. But you can see tutorials before everyone else. So that's how people comment before you see it and stuff like that. Uh, second of all, you get the blend file. So for example, this one, uh, once I finish it and make it look a bit nicer and all that, you can get the raw blend file and just render it for yourself, play around with the seed, etc. And at this point, I have hundreds of blend files since I've had Patreon for like, I think three years, maybe 2.9. Yeah, a lot of blend files there. Third of all, exclusive tutorials. I still haven't done one for the month of January because right now it's the sixth when I'm recording this. So, uh, But every month I do at least one exclusive tutorial, sometimes a series or sometimes just a very long, intense exclusive tutorial. So if you want bonus content, early access, um, the blend files, sometimes just random posts, Patreon is the way to do that. Or if you just want to support this channel and the CG Matter one, that is the most direct way to do it. Thank you, everybody who's an active patron, and thank you for watching until the end of the tutorial. Link in the description if you uh, care about this stuff, and also thank you, Micro Center. And uh, that's it.